Tonight's episode is brought to you by the Be Real Podcast Network. For more episodes like this, go to breelnetwork.com. Enjoy the show. Today on our show, we go over our top five superhero sidekicks. So get excited for this episode of What, Allie? Basement Condition. Geeks, freaks, and internet peeps, and welcome to this episode of Basement Condition. I'm Brandon. I'm Beard. I'm Ali. I am Kyle. Kyle. Hi, okay. Kyle. Hey. Still a robot, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Not quite and awesome, still, but I am not constipated. Awesome. A little bit, yeah. It was those spicy buffalo wings. So this is a interesting episode because I know some of us aren't big comic book fans or aficionados. <coughs> me. <coughs> me. Uh, also me. Comic books. Yeah. So <laughs> we picked uh, <laughs> superhero sidekicks out we of did. the Batman cookie jar and Yay. that does if you think about it though, that doesn't necessarily mean comic books. Oh, trust me, my list is littered oh, I, with no one from comic books. Oh, I knew yours would be, but I'm just saying Ali might uh, might have overseen that. He might have surprised us. He uh, might not. We'll see. I've got a kind of a random list, so... That's why That's I always try random. to put together our little cover of it and throw it out there before. Jeez, uh, uh, sorry, guys. Take comfy? it easy. It's having a little bit of trouble there. Oh. You heard the Mike's feelings. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. It's sorry, okay. Blue Green. <laughs> Is that its nickname now? Well, it says blue, blue and green. It's green. It does. All right, so I'm interested to see where this goes because well, guess, of that uh, fact. I guess we're gonna start with Ali this week. Well, Are first we? we're gonna start with a little superhero oh, sidekick right. history. Some nuggets, if you will. <laughs> we're gonna. I'm gonna school you. You ready to be schooled? I, no. I am. No. No. You're no. not. No. You can take a little nappy. It's not school. Uh, it's not. Tutor us, Tuton boy, Tuton. Superhero sidekicks have been around since the 1930s, with some examples being the Crimson Avengers sidekick Wing and Mr. America's sidekick Fat Man. The early 1960s, during the Silver Age, is when a lot of the sidekicks were created that remain popular today, such as Rick Jones, Aqualad, Kid Flash, and Wonder Girl. 1964 gave us the original superhero sidekick team. What beard? Justice League. Teen Titans. There you go. I said sidekicks, <laughs> yeah. team silly. He was drinking his very strong coffee. <laughs> uh, yeah, very Teen strong. Titans, which was led by the one and only Robin. Robin. Well, when he became Nightwing, right? Well, he was Robin when they started, but he became Nightwing in Teen Titans, yeah. So, yeah. Ah, I didn't think I would find much on it, but I thought there was a little... A well, nice we know little... you in your research. We knew you'd find some sort of something for us. Yeah. To yes. start this little Shazam off. He's giving himself an applause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. In the palm of his own hand. Yes. So, yes, Allie, yes. do you want to kickstart my heart? Sure, I might as well <laughs> kickstart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Sorry. Yeah! Alright. Uh, that's a James Hetfield of... covering 80s yeah. hair metal covering again. Some fucking Motley Crue. Ooh, yeah! Yeah! Okay, well, to start my list off is really the only kind of, I guess, superhero realm in terms of, like, DC Marvel. Okay. Um, Interesting. I'm intrigued. Are you intrigued? I'm hard as fuck. So he is from Marvel, um, has made an appearance in a few of the new Marvel movies. Oh, Riri. Riri. It's a sidekick. Oh, okay. I like it. I like it. I know who it is. Who is it? War Machine. It is War Machine. Nice. It is. Um, Rhodey Rhodes. Oh my oh. god, that was your neck? <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck. Oh my god. I thought something worse than fell. me. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you guys didn't hear, that was disgusting. No, I... That was like me cracking all of my knuckles very, very well, and that came out of your goddamn neck. I thought something fell. <laughs> Holy shit. I was gonna be like, what broke? <laughs> Just Brandon. Wow. <laughs> Just okay. Brandon's neck. <laughs> wow, okay. Jesus. All right. Pulling it back in here. Ow, that, Carry on. Jesus. 
<laughs> so, um, his wow. first appearance, uh, apparently, I'm obviously not a big comic book guy, but his first appearance was in Iron Man number 118, January of 1979. Um, wow, I thought he would have come out earlier than that. I thought he was newer than that. Yeah, no, that's what I've, uh, again, I'm going off my wiki notes here, but uh, that's what it's saying here. First appearance as James Rhodes was uh, 1979. Cool. And then what have we seen him in? Uh, was he, he wasn't in the first Iron Man. Well, he was, he but was not, not, as not as War Machine. Machine. Right. He was just right. Rhodes. We knew he was going to be War Machine. And, you know, who? why not be uh, the sidekick to a guy that's got an unlimited amount of money and an unlimited amount of uh, imagination when it mm-hmm. comes to putting weapons together and putting defense and against anything together? And I always personally together. thought his suits were more badass because they yeah. always had, like, the cannons and oh, shit I like on his them. Suit, I like his suit better than Tony Stark's He's suit. got so much more firepower on there, and he's, you know, uh, at the end of um, well, uh, the, the Avengers, was it? the first or second one when like oh quick they're getting away it was the second one they're all getting away and like they're just bringing the war machine oh, yeah. they're all flying away he's just like uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> like fucking A man that guy's awesome yeah little missiles and yeah. shit yeah missiles. missiles and what was what was Rose before he's a pilot yeah he's a, a an air force right as a pilot yeah. an air force so what he, he was said wiping hair off of his body for, for fun an air force <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad no one caught on to that <laughs> at all. <laughs> he was not there. Uh, the Nair Force. I didn't hear you say Nair Force. I didn't hear the silent yeah. N. Well, I said an Air Force, the Nair Force. <laughs> yes, we have fun here on the basement condition. <laughs> I'm just having fun, Michael. Is that all you got? That, that's, you all I, that's all I really got. Like he, he, can't, he can't top Nair Force. No, no I can't top Nair Force. <laughs> and again, I'm not the big comic book guy. He's really the only... Like I said, DC Marvel World, so if you guys want to expand on them anymore, go for it. If not, Beardo. I'm actually, great. I'm really curious for what the rest of your list is going to be then. Yeah, it's me a too. little random. So is mine, <laughs> trust me. I, mine is quite the stretch, because I knew, I knew these two would definitely have their kind of comic book world covered, so... I'm waiting to see how many Robins come out of these lists. <laughs> yeah. Alright, Beard. <laughs> no comment, moving on. <laughs> um, so mine... Is uh, my number five, Arthur from The Tick. You, nice. Yes, you have yes. He's on my list too. He's my he's number five. He's, he's, my, number, oh, he's my number three. Yeah? He's my number three, yeah. Wow. He's, this is getting to be interesting. He's absolutely like just the biggest walkover. Well, what's this? Yeah, he's so he's like. He's the perfect sidekick. He's <laughs> kind of chubby in his mm-hmm. suit and stuff. And yeah, me but of he's Costanza so loyal. In a yeah. Fucking, yeah. Like moth out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, he's actually the Jewish sidekick yeah. of the tick. <laughs> the go, bunny so man. Costanza. And he has the catchphrase, not, be, in the face, not, not in the face, not in the face. Well, yeah, he used to be the, uh, an attorney. Yeah. And he hated his job and wanted adventures. And yeah. So he decided to purchase a flying, suit. a flying suit yeah, from an auction. I need auction. to rewatch this show. I <laughs> love the show. I love the cartoon, man. I even, you know I what? The game I or, liked I, the live action series. A lot I of people loved hated it. it. The new one is really good, too. I like. I remember watching it with you, yeah, when it was on. Or you had it on. But that's yeah. crazy. That's So that's a first on Basement Condition that I actually have something on the same list as anyone so far. Mine's right in the same yeah. spot, too. Yeah. Arthur is my number okay, three. Yeah. And he has no powers, but makes up for it by being crazy smart, showing mm-hmm. a wide knowledge of everything, including Japanese lore. Yes. And his suit allows him to fly. Yes. But he's very, <laughs> yeah. uh, very loyal. It's all white. He's a moth. He's and very loyal what's more to vulnerable <laughs> than a moth? Like... Yeah. Oh, look, a flame. Uh, <laughs> he basically was just like, I want to be a superhero, and he did it. Yeah. So, good for you, Arthur. And, yeah, the base, it, uh, the, uh, base of operations is his apartment. Yeah. No, it's, I love that whole series, but, yeah, Arthur is one of my favorite characters in any sort of superhero lore, let alone just a sidekick, so. Yeah, I read, I read something, it's just like, Arthur's the kind of guy that you borrow money from and never pay him back, you steal his girlfriend, you yeah. walk all over him, and he's still there for and he's you. he's still your best friend. <laughs> Where was he on your list? Number three. Oh, nice. Wow. Good stuff. He's not on your list. Yeah. He was on my runner-ups. Yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm really curious to hear what's on your damn list. Yeah. So yeah, there's the first live action show, the cartoon, and there is the, the new, new live one. action, but I have no idea when those series are supposed to keep going, cause that one was picked up, because yeah. Amazon released... Well, that was on at the same time as another show, right? 
that they the just released. John Claude Van Damme one. John Claude Van Damme. That's the other one that got yeah. picked up. Yeah. They Kick. doing splits and kidding, kicking everybody. He well, he Some actually kick. plays himself, but he goes back to work and he's actually a CIA agent as well. It's he's, really funny. He's cool. It just makes fun of him. Oh, okay. I was gonna say this is a serious. No, it's show. not a serious <laughs> show. Either. No, very much not. Great choice, but damn. Yeah, it. damn. Right. So that was my number well, five. That's my number five. I guess I'll go into mine. So my number five is very random. I mean, I think you've come to expect that from me now. Um, I actually, this is a very last minute replacement that I made on the way here. So originally I actually had Simon Belmont from Captain N. Um, if those of you who are not aware of that show is, uh, you know, in the theme of those like, you know, eighties action, you know, Saturday morning cartoon things. And it was basically Captain N was Captain Nintendo and he was basically a leader of, it was kind of like your whole like teen Titans or a squad or whatever. And so he had a bunch of video game characters as his sidekicks. So my favorite of all of those sidekicks was Simon Belmont from Castlevania. Um, cause he's kind of a cocky dick and very funny, but I decided because I'm, I've already stretched to have one person that's part of like a team rather than just a direct sidekick in my list. I'm replacing him. And, um, so my number five is actually Rosie, the superhero in training of WWE fame. Uh, sidekick to the Hurricane. Um, Rosie started off as a wrestler in a tag team called the Three Minute Warning. Um, they would essentially, they're two big fat Samoan guys. They'd come and fucking kick the shit out of everybody. Um, later on, as the Attitude Era progressed, Rosie wanted to become a superhero. So he went under the wing of the Hurricane and became the superhero in training. He used to wear a big gigantic shirt that said superhero in training, which spells out shit. Um, if you don't know how to spell. And he used to wear, instead of a cape, a beach towel. Um, like, we've actually talked about this on the show before. Brandon used to do this naked a couple months ago. Um, <laughs> on top of that, you know, the whole Hurricane Squad was filled out with Mighty Molly and Super Stacy. I love yeah. Stacy Keebluth. Stacy Keebluth is my favorite. I love youth. But, um, end of the day, Rosie's gonna take the number five spot on my list. He's hilarious. Perfect sidekick. That's him right there. Um, perfect sidekick. He was the muscle of the team. He'd always come and back up the hurricane whenever the hurricane needed it. And all he ever wanted to do was learn how to fly. So did he believe he could fly? He believed he could fly. I don't know why I don't remember this so much. Go did back he... and watch like Smackdown in like the early two thousands. Okay. That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Actually. So you'll, you'll get there. Did um, he believe he could touch the sky? He did. Okay. I'm... <laughs> that's my Robert always peeing on people. Um, so yeah, Rosie, uh, as I say, la very last minute edition. I didn't know if it was going to be allowed, but he, it's still, he's still a sidekick to a superhero. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be from the he, comic. He made it into my number five. Hurricane so, is Rosie. definitely a superhero. When Stand I, when back. I, There's a hurricane coming through. When I was doing like the history thing and just looking up, uh, superhero sidekicks, yep. even from Nintendo and shit. Yep. Mario is considered a superhero, mm -hmm. and so Luigi's Luigi and Yoshi could be sidekicks. Even Toad, really. Yeah. So, so yeah, Rosie, if you're not, you know, familiar with wrestling, it's, uh, if you're ever trying to get into it, watch some early Smackdowns from the, like, 2000s, and, uh, a lot of their angles were very comedic and quite good. Um, was he a whole lot of Rosie? He was a whole lot of Rosie. <laughs> well, his old tag team partner was Jamal. Yeah. Rosie and Jamal, and now is Rosie and the Hurricane. Hurricane Helms. Oh, Helms. Tougher than a two dollar steak. Oh. <laughs> oh. I didn't know how to respond. <laughs> oh. So yeah, there's my number five. Good Alistair, stuff. Number Good four. stuff. All right. Number four. 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 Okay. Um, this guy not so much a huge sidekick by no, means he's little. of well no <laughs> short no no. In the means of he's he's not not too smart reoccurring as much as uh, as he is smart or short. Okay, that happens. That happens. So from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I'm going with Casey Jones. Nice, nice. good call. Mr. Nice. Uh, Mr. Hockey faced wielding anything from a bat to a cricket cricket paddle, cricket paddle to yeah. a a goalie hockey stick carrying around in his golf bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe a little. <laughs> Primatine might help just clear that up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to cost you, Tinkerbell. And it's funny, too, because he's more Raphael's sidekick because they have a bit of a bond, but mm -hmm. a lot of the time, 
when they get into fights, he claims that Raphael is his sidekick. Yeah. Raphael. 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 Being a vigilante <laughs> himself. It's kind of just like a parody of a whole bunch of characters kind of mixed in. Yeah. Well, that's what the Ninja Turtles was. Yeah. But he, he pretty is, much a rip-off. He's of another Daredevil. one of those kind of like ultimate sidekicks because really like compared to who he's actually claiming he's helping, he's basically useless. Yeah. <laughs> But in a good way, and he's got heart. Just yeah, a absolutely. self-proclaimed vigilante, you know? Yep. And he likes pizza just as much as they do, so, I mean... I yeah. like pizza but just yeah, as much as they do. But yeah, he was, like, he was actually a hockey national pizza player, day. like an athlete, though, right? Happy National Pizza Day! Happy National, national pizza, pizza Day! day. Hey, hey, Happy National Pizza Day. There you go, you have to use it twice in one episode. Oh, he's going to use it more than that. Oh, he also uh, has the love interest of uh, April O'Neil. Oh, April O'Neil. You know. I would sniff those titties at least once. Sniff those titties. I don't know where they would have been if they you need to <laughs> s- sniff. Moving on, Casey Jones. <laughs> ah, First appearance Jones. was in Raphael number one. It was a micro series in 1985, so he has been around for a little while now. But that is my number four. That was a great choice. I'm actually Gunkala, glad Gunkala. that ended up on someone's list. That was on one of my runner ups, so I'm, I'm stoked on that. Because when I posted on. Twitter the cover, someone saw the little Casey Jones I had on and claimed that he wasn't a sidekick, but yes. Was it Topher Grace again? Because I'm fucking no. so sick of Topher Grace. <laughs> You've called that multiple people Topher Grace. Or you just mean Topher Grace this time. Yes. <laughs> Alright. Beard. <laughs> My number four. Uh, superhero sidekick. Superhero sidekick. You had already mentioned, but I'm going to go with Luigi. Luigi! Nice. Ah! The, the oh, younger oh, brother oh, to oh, Mario. Oh, oh. That's a great choice. I love Luigi. Yeah. Luigi guy. I always enjoyed using him personally, even in any Mario. Jump well, a little higher, quicker. Seems... You, you strike me as a Luigi guy. <laughs> I actually know that, because t- I remember like any time we played Mario, like you'd always want to be Luigi. And like even in like Mario Kart or... like. Mario Party, like I, I remember Luigi was your boy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do you do you use him in Mario Kart too? Yeah, for sure. I remember that. I think he's more balanced. I distinctly than Mario. remember you being quite the Luigi user. He's actually cool though, and like they always give him like secret little powers that like no one else has. Like even in Super Smash Brothers, he's got that secondary like smash hit that no one else has in the game. Like everyone typically has like one smash hit for each directional button. But then he also has a smash hit where you, if you run into someone and time, like, your punch quickly, he does that, like, fire punch and, like, sends you flying, and no one else has it. Yeah, and he was originally just a palette swap with Mario, yeah. like... Yeah, well, it was just so that they could have a player, too, or whatever, yeah. mm-hmm. in the original um, Mario uh, Mario Bros. in the arcade, but um, that's a good and choice. And then they made him and thin made him and... Well, then, down. yeah, and then he has his own game, uh, the Haunted Mansion and stuff. That, both and there's those actually, actually a fun. lot of theories about that game, mm-hmm. like about him being dead and stuff, and yeah. has been dead since then. Mm-hmm. Like, lots of cool stuff. Both of those games are fun, and I mean, Nintendo really put a lot of faith behind Luigi. I mean, he was that was the launch title for the GameCube, was a Luigi game, which is crazy. And then, I mean, even just a couple of years ago, it was the year of Luigi, and, like, they did everything Luigi for, like, a whole year, which yeah. was sick. Well, even now, one character. of the Mario's, they did, like, a Luigi add-on, right? Yeah, they something. did. Yeah, it was, um, I think it was Mario Brothers Wii U. They did, like, a, and Luigi mode or Wii whatever. U, Luigi Wii U, yeah. Ah, Luigi! Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, he's a great sidekick. That'd be, would that be a cool game to see on the Switch? Another Luigi... Luigi's Mansion? I just I mean, another sure. Luigi well, game? Well, there, there has been a second Luigi's Mansion. It was yeah. on the 3DS, and it was fun. Um, yeah, like a full-fledged, like if they could do a gigantic, like multiple mansion Luigi's Mansion game or Would some sort of... Cool? Super Luigi World. <clears throat> I'm right beside you, man. That that's, could be cool. That's that could be cool. cool. <laughs> I would like that. Yeah. Would, would I'd, it I'd totally too? And of course, he would. He was portrayed by that guy that I can never remember. John Luigiamo. John Luigiamo. That's the one That's in the that guy. awesome, amazing, not so much Mario <laughs> live action movie. Oh God. <coughs> where King Koopa or whatever had Bowser. Wanna be Den- Dennis Hopper. Wanna be cornrows. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really even mind that. Movie. Bleach. Bro. I don't mind it either. But as a Super yeah, Mario, it shouldn't be. It's Super one Mario. of those things where it's they called it something else. Yeah. 
Although, what else do you call two plumbers saving some random princess from a dinosaur like bad guy? Render them differently. <laughs> Just render them different. <laughs> CGI, bro. Like pixels. All right. Yeah. Well, that's good. Good? That was good. Yeah. Great that was choices. Great. I'm Beautiful. happy with your choice. All right. My number four is from 2008 Kick Ass Ooh. by Mark Millar and John Romita Jr. Asshole. Uh oh. Hit Girl. Damn Ooh. It. That's my number three. And it, <laughs> might, it might be it's debatable be because episode. they it's more of a team up sort of, but it's his comic. Like, yeah, she counts. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just saying, well, like she was a sidekick to her dad. <coughs> Touche. Yeah. There you go. So she does count. There you go. Of course and she her counts. dad was of course uh, what was his name? Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Portrayed by the great Nicolas Cage. Duck! Is in she? the movie, which is actually really good, yeah. even if you love the comic, because they pretty much do it page by page. Yeah, except it's bloody and gory. And a little less gory, because <laughs> when he's getting beaten by the bad guys and being tied up, in the comic, his testicles are connected to a battery, a oh, uh, car good. battery. Nice. Yeah. So during that, is he like, let's just finish this date and uh, go kiss <laughs> so much? No, he's not played by Keanu go Reeves. Eat some that's Nicholas Cage. Duck. Yeah, <laughs> go eat some duck. <laughs> there you. Go. That sounded more. But Hit Girl. Yes. Yeah, she's, she's a, a little bit. She's pretty well. I'm just reading some of her skills and stuff like that. She's been trained to take a bullet, obviously while wearing a bulletproof vest, and they do it in Kick Ass too, and she just shoots him with the with, with the gun, and then with the Magnum in the back afterwards. Yeah, that happens in I think the Hit Girl comic book. Because she was so popular that they continued on with her. And how, you know how in the movie she goes to school and she gets him to teach her how to fit in? Yeah. That's from the Hit Girl comic book. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was That's pretty cool. awesome. She just used the, uh, the six <laughs> stick on, uh, on the girls to make them puke and shit all over themselves. Right in front of the <laughs> like, hey. Oh, God. Wow. Ah, God. She's well trained in hand-to-hand combat, fighting with both blunt and bladed uh, weapons. Also been taught about guns, inventors of guns, and even action movies and action movie stars. Um, yeah, the chick is just, as much as she's, she's, she's got like a mouth like a fucking sailor, she swears more than anybody in the movie, yep. and she doesn't take any shit from anybody, and if anyone tries giving it to her, you get the sick stick. Yep. If not, you get a blade up the ass, and you turn to do a human sh- uh, shish kebab, you know what I mean? So, shish kebab! She had to be on the list. Yeah, that's a good call. I like it. It's a great call. Okay, well, my number four. Here we go. Numero four. Getting a little weird. Well, it was already kind of weird because I You're started with a fucking weird. wrestler. So my number four is Handman from Freakazoid. Uh, not only was Handman Freakazoid's best right-hand man, he was literally his right hand. <laughs> okay. Handman only appeared in one episode of Freakazoid, but he was my favorite sidekick of the bunch, because Freakazoid has had multiple sidekicks. A show right also by one of my favorite writers. Who? Paul Dini. Oh, yeah. Look at that armpit stain, I bud. know. It's Chill hot down here. Chill the fuck here. out there, bud. It's hot down um, here. So, oh, he, yeah, he was, uh, he was my favorite sidekick of the bunch. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, other than uh, never being able to properly pronounce Freakazoid's name, the dynamic duo get along very well and were able to successfully foil the plans of the Lobe. At the end of the episode, Freakazoid and Handman part ways, leaving much more to be desired as Handman falls in love with Hand Girl, Freakazoid's left hand, and the two are soon to be married. Um, I'm sure they'll do lots of hand stuff on their wedding night. Ha 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 ha. Um, yeah, so, you know, I... <sighs> Once again, I kind of figured, you know, Brandon and Beard were going to have the whole kind of comic universe covered pretty well. I, I can't believe I didn't think of even Freakazoid <laughs> on my runner-up list. Well, Free- Freakazoid was like, right away, I was like, fuck, he had so many sidekicks, I could just do a top five of all of his sidekicks. But I was like, yeah, it's a little bit boring. So I kind of like, you know, rifled through what we had available, and I was like, Handman was the fucking funniest, and especially because he could never actually pronounce Freakazoid, but it's just Freakazoid providing his voice. So, yeah, Handman, number four. I wonder if I South like Park it. got the idea to do, uh... And Mr. High End. Yeah, no taco okay. favorite pieces. Taco, 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 taco. Taco, taco. From that, that'd be funny. You know, like my spicy Louisiana it wouldn't choice. surprise me. Blush. Um, okay, well, I can't do my number three because that was Hit Girl. Hit right. Girl well, was your number three. Beardo. Number three. Number three. 
Well, I'm going to go with uh, Foggy Nelson. Oh, good choice. Uh, Daredevil, first appearance. Daredevil number one. Nice. April 1964. Wow. That's a long time ago. That is a long long time ago. All I know about Foggy is what I've seen on the show, so... Played by the same guy that was in Mighty Ducks. Yeah, uh, Fulton or yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah and he yeah, looks yeah, so yeah, yeah. different. Like, shot. He, I swear he looks so short yeah. on Daredevil, but I guess in Mighty Ducks, every camera angle of him is always looking up. Up at him, yeah. Well, plus he was also actually just bigger than all of the kids back then. Now people have just caught up to his size. Yeah, that's true. I man. was the tall kid at one point in time. Yeah, so yeah, was so I. I was 5'8 and just... You're nope. taller than everyone else. Yeah, I am taller than everyone here. But I'm, I'm also used to being around <laughs> people like much. Brad Jones, who's like six foot five. Touche. Or Kalen, who's six foot two, or Jacob, who's my height. Like, most of the people other than you guys that I hang out with are all taller than me or my height. Yeah, we're right, the thanks. short crew. <laughs> anyway, so back to what we're ones. talking about. Yeah. Beardo. Yeah. Uh, District Attorney, uh, Murdoch and Nelson. Does he ever become, like, an actual superhero? No. No? No, but he just, like, again, he's very, like, loyal, and he's willing to take a bullet and sacrifice his life for uh, Daredevil. Well, he definitely kind of falls under that category of, like, just, you know, that kind of second man, right? Well, that's a lot of Marvel sidekicks are very much like that. They're not like DC, where it's a full-on sidekick. He's almost like an Alfred. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, no super pick powers, or nothing like that, and, like, shit. use a gun. Yeah. <laughs> like, even in Blind one bastard. particular, like, graphic novel story arc, uh, Shadowland, when Daredevil becomes, like, the leader of the Hand or whatever, but he's, like, possessed by, like, a the devil or whatever, a demon. Or the demon, because it's the Hand, whatever, I should say. He's, like, the voice of reason for him, who, like, tries to put him between... Daredevil, who isn't quite himself, and, like, other superheroes that he's trying to kill and stuff. But he's like, if you're not with me, you're my enemy. And he just flat out tries to kill them. That sounds good. I want to read that now. Mm-hmm. For some reason, whenever I hear about Daredevil, I always just imagine if they did a parody series where it's more where he's more like Blinken from fucking Robin Hood Men in Tights. Because <laughs> he's blind as fuck. And just like, hey, Blinken. Did you say a Blinken? I ain't say a Blinken. I said a Blinken. <laughs> You got some real nice boobs. But your arms! <laughs> you lost them in the battle! <laughs> I'm over here. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Great choice. Crap, I was gonna say something. What so were you gonna oh, say? side note. excited. Ow! Yeah. I'm gonna get you back. I was right in the testicle. That was nowhere near your I crush. tuck them up in the boxers no, so it feels don't, good. Don't even. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. And if you hit me in the nuts, I get you back. I'm gonna hit you so. How he said nuts. he became part of the hand, and I said, Ninja Turtles was the foot. The foot. That's where they got that. Is it? Yeah. Really? Just are putting you, that out are there. Are you making the this hand up? foot? No, I'm serious. That's where they got the idea. A lot of Ninja ah! Turtles was influenced. Like even Master Splinter is very much like Stick. Yoda. Oh. oh. But Raphael <laughs> using size. Damn you, comic nerds. <laughs> I think that's really cool. And that's another example of what we've said before about taking inspiration yeah. from other shit and making something original. Because mm-hmm. I didn't realize that until someone pointed it out, and it's pretty obvious. <laughs> Hand food. A ninja clan, yeah. Hand <laughs> Yes, yes. Hand food. All right, Hand so we're on number three. Yeah, we are. All right, let me see if <clears throat> anyone said mine. All right, no. No one said, no one said okay. mine. Okay, oh. Don't worry, it's okay. Get to it. All Do right, it. it's Kid Flash. <sighs> oh, sorry. Someone I know nothing about. Number three, aka Peter. Wally West. <laughs> Why? What number do you have him at? Two. Two. As oh. I said before, so I wonder what your number one is. This is going to be a short episode. Well, we've got listener lists and. Welcome. That's about it. Well, runner-ups. Yeah. So Kid Flash, aka Wally West, the original. Yep. Uh, the first Kid Flash, and later the third. Flash, uh, he is the nephew, nephew of Barry, Barry Allen, Allen, or sorry, his Barry Allen's wife, Iris, and he gained his abilities basically the exact same way Barry so. Allen did. He was visiting Barry Allen in his lab and has a freak accident that lightning hits him and he falls into the same chemicals and he's Kid Flash. And, yeah. 
Uh, some abilities include super speed, superhuman agility, and stamina. Uh, the ability to vibrate and phase through matter, time travel, creation of vortexes, dimensional travel, accelerated healing, and metabolism. Metabolism. <laughs> I had to say it so I could say it properly. He has metabolism. <laughs> I had to say it slow because I got a low metabolism. <laughs> and uh, he actually became the Flash and one of the most popular versions of the Flash during the 1990s because the you original Flash stupid names back died. then. Was he called the metabolism? <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> Zoom and the metabolism. <laughs> Dr. Quick. <laughs> Sorry. Those are both people. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so who's number, number two? Who's my number John two, yeah. <laughs> but, again, um, my reason was because in Young Justice, in the second season, he knew he wasn't as fast as Flash or, um, uh, what's as his name? sexy. Who's the, the one from the future? Bart, Bart yeah. Um, or Bart cool, Bobby, man. I'm pretty sure. Bart Allen or whatever, I'm but his, sure, yeah. what's his hero... Like his hero name. Uh, I think he's just another Flash, isn't he? Bartimus. No. Um, the Bart. <laughs> the Bartman. But either way, like, in, basically Dude. in the final episode, they just had to run really fast and create a vortex around the thing <clears throat> and to stop it from exploding, yada yada. And Wally West basically, even knowing that he wasn't fast enough, still tried to help anyways, made the sacrifice. He was first known as Impulse. Yeah. And then he became Kid Flash... And he was also the Flash at one point as well. Mm -hmm. He sounds like a boxer. A lot of... It's not as easy as, like, Batman and his Robins who grow up and become other people. Speedsters are just, like, Flashes and Kid Flashes. And then there's Reverse Flashes and Zooms. But there's different ones of them, too. It's very The whole time travel thing. The whole like time travel. There's, like, six different <laughs> versions of like, the right, whole multiverses. Right now, there's two Kid yeah. Flashes. No, sorry, there's two Wally Wests. One's a Kid Flash, one's a Flash, and Barry Allen is still here as a Flash, too. So now, like... was it a similar progression from how most his lack went from Kid Gorgeous to Kid Presentable? <laughs> Very much like that. <laughs> what, what was the final name for him? It was like, I can't remember. I went from Kid Gorgeous to... And then he like, goes through the whole thing, and then he's like Kid Presentable or something <laughs> like that. But yeah, call so that the in... Stinger. They don't In Young use Justice, <laughs> he made the sacrifice, and then he ends up dying. Hey, come on, Helma. Whatever the machine is, we kept zapping him, and it just drained him, and he Zap. he vaporized and Zap. like phased well, into nothing. Zap. That's one of the things that him and the Flash, Barry Allen, are known for: is that they actually give up their lives to save anybody, mm -hmm. and uh, Batman actually likes them more than most superheroes. Which is which is a lot to say about Batman. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that pop? Well, I mean, you'll, superhero look you, like the Brian always, Kendrick. Yeah, you always yeah, hear him say note. too, like they're always saying, like, I have to try, I like, know you know, like about. no matter what. So, and they always go for it, like, especially Flash. Yeah, that's what I love about the show, and well, in general. And they're portraying Kid Flash very well, even though the Flash on the live action TV show. Has a lot of traits of Kid Flash from the 90s who becomes Flash. Anyway, we'll move on because they... <coughs> I have no idea what we're yeah, talking about here. I literally, for the last like hour that you guys have been speaking... Oh, is it like your stupid wrestling rants that we have to listen to? Yeah, mine are actually interesting. Up, and put up with and be quiet during? Well, you don't have to be quiet. You could try and participate, but you just don't care. Well, actually, I, I ask you questions and shit. I've watched the Flash series and... Good. Upon realizing so that, three, then, you know, it takes him on. ten seconds to jizz because he's so flashy. <laughs> what? Um, my number three was already said. It was Arthur. Um, all right. I don't need to reiterate. We all kind of went through it. Arthur is fucking awesome. So, so I believe it is number time. Two. No, before that, no, we're no, taking no. a promo break, We do the promo. Don't we usually do that at number one? No, we do no, that at number, number two. number two. How, how many weeks and months now have we been doing this? Before number two. I swear it's before nope, number one. It's before number nope, two. Before number, number two. two. It right. just feels like quicker because we have... We well, have usually by the time we get to number two, it's been a, like 40 minutes. That's what well, I mean. So. <clears throat> That's fine. All right. Promo! 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 
We asked the man on the street what he thought about the After Movie Diner website and podcast, but sadly he had never heard of either and was on his way to the doctors to have a mole removed. Or it could have been a badger, he wasn't sure. It felt bigger than a mole. Also, he wasn't sure how it got up there in the first place. Anyway, we asked all the famous people, like Michael Ironside, Fred the Hammer Williamson, Ted Raimi, Barbara Crampton, Cynthia Rothrock and so on, that they've interviewed over there on the After Movie Diner website and podcast what they thought about the After Movie Diner website and podcast. But most of them said that if we quoted them, we would be hearing from their comical southern lawyers complete with bow tie, meat gut and brow mopping hanker. So instead, we say who cares what anyone thinks of you after Movie Diner website and podcast, you are awesome just the way you are, so don't you go changing. If you want to see for yourself, go to AfterMovieDiner.com or find the After Movie Diner podcast on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever podcasts are found. The After Movie Diner, doing it their own way since 2011. Your guide to cinema etiquette for the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews podcast. Question 17. When choosing a seat at a largely empty movie cinema, do you... A. Sit directly in front of another person. B. Sit right alongside a couple clearly enamored with one another. Or C. Take a seat away from other patrons that afford you a good you. If you answered A or B, fuck you! For more useful cinema etiquette, join Paul and Wayne on the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews podcast at Podomatic on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. I'm Dan. I'm Kenton. And we are the hosts of the Media Nerds podcast, a weekly look at all things media. Hey, Trotsky, you're in advertising. Be it radio, TV, online, movies, yeah, Netflix, all media. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. We love the media. And if you <laughs> love the media, we love you. Yes, and you should listen to our podcast because it's a lot of fun. Yeah, what the hell? Listen. And it's left the media. Media Nerds Podcast every week at MediaNerdsPodcast.com, iTunes, Google Play. What do you have to lose? By the way, is it it's Potter and I always ask you that. Potter and family, yeah. P O T T P O D E R. Potter and Potter. Is a modern P-O- family. Oh, okay. He gets up on the high legs like, ee, ee. <laughs> Do you call the dolphin? Does he call you at home? Does he have a dolphin? Is that oh, how it goes? Sorry, we pushed record already. Hi, yeah. welcome back. Thank welcome you for back to Basement Edition. Enjoying uh, the promo break. And uh, I know Brandon's going to say, if you're just joining us, we're doing our top five superhero sidekicks, and I'm going to make fun of you for joining in halfway through. You That's what I like to say, yes. You silly but ne'er-do-wells. As I thought before, we went to our promo break, mm-hmm. and I passed out. For a little while because that just winded me. <laughs> um, we are on our number two now. We are. I believe it's me. Our number two. Our number two. And my number mine, uh, two. Number two. Oh, that would have been a guts. That's we're, a good we're, runner we're, I'm up waiting there. for him. Oh. oh. Oh, shit. Number two. Number two. He's a good henchman. What about Frau Farisana? Oh, top five henchmen. There you go. That's going in the in the. Look at that. Creating uh, ideas uh, right uh, here. Uh, uh, All right. They're always after me, lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> we could just do top five fucking Austin, Austin Powers. Austin Powers. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways. That's later. This is now. Let's do this. It is. Now. Okay. Here we go. Mine are actually kind of more of a group than... I was going to say are. Yeah. Uh, more, I'm intrigued. More of a group than, than a single person um first seen in despicable me henchman oh. to Gru, the minions nice nice those little lovable yellow sidekicks. bastards yeah yeah i got i guess he kind of becomes a superhero in the first movie yeah because he's a villain in the first one but doesn't he stop another villain Essentially, yeah. He, he kind of he, he wants do it, to like, do it. Kind of? That's what I mean. Yeah. He's kind of a superhero without knowing it. <laughs> yeah. The the little girls that he ends up uh, well, it, adopting kind of change his uh, his seeing of, of his, his evil ways. Yeah. So it's for your, personal uh, gain at first, right? Yeah. It's just like a yeah. rivalry thing. Let's hear your best minion impersonation, Ali. Uh, minion impression? Uh, I, Have you ever done a, a minion impression? That's why I'm asking. No, they're, they're very hard to do. It's very high pitch. Yeah. Ah! Like they're they're little like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know. That's, if you haven't seen the little short videos that um, that came out just after Despicable Me, they might even be on the special features disc. They're I think fucking they are, hilarious. Yeah. For one of the movies. But um, yeah, these little uh, these little dudes. Um, pretty much their entire purpose is to serve like the most notorious master or or hero. Well, not really hero because they're bad at first, essentially, yeah. and then once they've turned hero, they. They switched the role pretty quickly, like Stuart, Bob, and uh, who's the other Kevin. one? And Kevin, who have their own, have the the lead roles in the in the Minion movies. You know, they're they're good little people, but um, they they seem to enjoy anarchy and uh, you know explosions and all that kind of stuff. So they're just very curious about the, that sort very, of thing. Very very much so. And if you got that many of them, and you know you're, you you can do something great with them. They remind me of the aliens from. Toy Story. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Except they're dumb and they just they say aliens. that. Yeah. Uh. yeah. They remind me of the serve bots from Mega Man, actually. You're afraid of the claw. Ooh, you're yeah. claw afraid of the you. claw. <laughs> That's my uh, my number two, those little number minions. Two. I wonder if they drew inspiration from... Inspiration? In, yeah, inspiration from the aliens and... Maybe they did. Or maybe the serve bots, because they're also yellow. See? Maybe they took them and went, mm, yeah, and smushed them together. <laughs> ah, ah. Just like Maybe that. Maybe they did. All right. Bearded Beard one. one. Well, we already said my number two. What was your number two? Your number three. Kid Flash, Kid Touche. Kid Flash. All right. My I number guess it's two. on to Brenda's. All right, so my number two and number one number are two. both from the same universe. Oh, franchise. I thought we were going to get to Robin eventually. <laughs> no, that's not my number two at all. No? It actually is not. Well, oh. I didn't want to do more than one He didn't Robin. want to blow his load. Right? Yeah, there you go. Because you could do... You, you, <laughs> see, I get so excited. Um, you could do top five Robins at this point, pretty much. Because there's like seven. Yeah, but there's only one good Robin. I don't give a fuck. No, the more I read I about the dick. other Robins, the more I like... <laughs> I need I dick. like them. I need Because they're very different in their characterization and their skills and shit like that. But right, anyway, we'll get to your number get two. Get to your number two. All right. My number two is Batgirl, a.k.a. Ooh. Barbara Gordon. A.k.a. Nice. Oracle. 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 Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Allie's learning a thing or two from playing the Batman games. There you go. Well, plus <laughs> I had her on a couple lists now. Yeah, well, She's Batman all the way. Uh, she made her first appearance in detective comics number 359 titled the million dollar debut of batgirl in 1967 a million dollar debut by writer gardner fox and artist carmine infantino written as the daughter of gotham city police commissioner james gordon Mm -hmm. so all throughout her life she was trained in martial arts and defense and shit being the daughter of a cop and she actually wanted to become a cop, but her father didn't want her to because it was too dangerous, and they live in Gotham. And she saw Batman one night and pretty much was like, all right, well, if I can't become a cop, then I'll just become a superhero. Because <laughs> that's better. Uh, yeah. My dad will be more proud of that. Well, it's not like she tells him. Um, anyway, uh, her abilities include being trained in multiple kinds of martial arts, has a genius-level intellect, has a photographic memory, is a slight... <clears throat> Slightly. She's a slut. What? <clears throat> is a slightly skilled hacker. No, she's a highly skilled hacker, as in Oracle and right. all that. Yeah. Uh, at one point, after being paralyzed by the Joker, she becomes the Oracle who helped by pretty much being the eyes and ears behind the scenes for the Bat family, and she could hack into computer systems and get them into She's places. the radio. Yeah. Come in, radio. And, of course, she's very much the inspiration for Felicity Smoke on... The Arrow show, mm-hmm. who pretty much becomes Oracle, except, except. except. that's my ah. John. Except <laughs> <laughs> that's my Sean Connery. You're doing your best, Sean Connery, Connery impression. John Connery and Sean Connery. <laughs> Sean Connery. I fixed it. <laughs> um, yeah, she becomes Overwatch. <laughs> I'm the Terminator, bitch. <laughs> I'll be back. Oh, that'd be awesome <laughs> if he was the Terminator. Really <laughs> back. Like famous titties for five hundred. Famous titles. But yeah, there have been other Batgirls as well, but obviously the she's she's the actually best. not the OG. No, but she's the best. But she's I think the original in the comic book universe because they actually had a <clears throat> Batwoman and Batgirl on the 
Adam West TV show, and I'm pretty sure that was her first appearance. Now, in the third, uh, well, I guess in the Schumacher films, the second one he did, isn't she Alfred's, like, niece or something? Yeah, yeah that's one of the worst parts of the movie in my inspiration. Mm-hmm. Or in, in your inspiration. In my inspiration. Which is pretty bad, considering you got Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze. But she walks into the bat cave, bang poison ivy. and Alfred just pops up on the screen and is like, oh, by the way, we have a suited... Like, fitted suit for you, good to go, put it on, and just run into action. Yeah, yeah. I don't know know if you have any self-defense classes or anything, but... Of course her suit doesn't show her nips, but we get to see Batman and Robin's nips the whole fucking movie. (laughs) And another thing I don't like, even in the movie before when Robin, or when Dick Grayson is trying to become Robin and Alfred is trying to convince Batman, and Batman's like, no, it's too dangerous, blah, 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 blah. Batgirl just, like, shows Shows up, up and he's like, who are you? It's me, Bruce. Look. Oh, Barbara. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's go. And they yeah. just suit up and run <coughs> off after the bad guys. Like, oh, come on. Yeah. yeah. A little bit more backstory here, yeah. please. A little bit more yeah. believable. Follow the canon, Schumacher. Come on. Anyway, yeah, that's my number two. Oh, number boy. Two. All right, well, my number two um, actually is part of the uh, comic world, if you will. Um, I might. Okay. Well, well yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, may I start with just saying Hellboy? Oh, nice. Abe Sapien. Nice. Um, fucking love Hellboy, but Abe was always my boy. Um, start with the facts. Basically, a badass Zora. Legend of Zelda reference for those of you who do not play video games. He can breathe underwater. He can swim at super speeds. His fighting skills are crazy. He fucks people up in hand-to-hand combat like it's going out of style. He's basically immortal. He's died twice, he's survived fatal wounds, and that would typically kill anyone. So what you're saying is he's a fucking badass. Yes. If I didn't say that already, I'm gonna repeat it. Badass. Um, he has the crazy intuition, he can typically sense danger before it happens. Top of that, in the films, he's the super genius, and kind of almost functions as an oracle, if you will. Very much so. If you will! Um... So he basically just kind of covers all the aspects of, like, what a sidekick could really do. And doesn't uh, Niles play him in the movies? In the first yeah. one. I think in, in the, the first, first one, one. yeah. Which just makes him even more badass. But on top of that, he's also just... Mouse? <laughs> he's pals with Ron Perlman, which, as I was saying... Damn. In the last episode, that popcorn hair motherfucker is the greatest man alive. <laughs> and wants to do a Hellboy 3, so get on and it. And he should play any character named Ron other than Ron Swanson. <laughs> um... So yeah, you know, he isn't your typical like Robin tag along kind of sidekick, but he's you he's know more of a partner. He's more of a equal. partner, but I still consider him like he's you know there's Hellboy and then there's yeah. Abe and like sure like I know Abe had his own run of comics as well and like well so do Robin yeah but all I, of them yeah much. he I don't know I just I I'm a huge Hellboy fan and I've always been really big into that franchise and like I wish so they would good. do a little more with it. Because I think, it, like, it's really, like, I'm not a huge comic guy, but, like, I love the Hellboy comics. I love the movies. They should do a third one. Ron Perlman keeps saying that he would do it. Oh, for sure, man. Because that's basically, like, who else would ever play Hellboy other than him? And Ron actually, Simmons. When we, when we did our sure. top five sequels that we want to see happen, I said Hellboy 3. Three. Yeah, and so, you know, and I actually said this here, you know, he's a secondary character to Hellboy, but he's, you know deemed equal if not at times more valuable than hellboy because he's you know hellboy can kind of lose his shit and like kind of go off and like abe's more like kind of cool-headed just like smart chill breathe underwater breathe underwater just keeps it real (laughs) Ah. so yeah that's my only real uh comic book that's an awesome choice i like that i picked abe because he's my boy that a boy he my boy abe is that what he does when he breathes underwater yeah that's the noise he makes Oh, he does breathe underwater. I've said that like three times why. now. Can you not duty on my couch just because we're on number two? Number two. <laughs> Man. Oh. All right. Yeah, you gotta stop eating those uh, chimichangas when you come over. Chimichanga. All right. All right now, so now, wait, are we on number one then? Now that Ali is done pooping. <laughs> Sorry. The duties. The duties. Um, Our number ones. So shall we count down? Yes. I wonder. All right. On one or after one? After one. So it'll be like three, two, one. Okay. Bing. Three, two, one. Crawling. Crawling. Boy. 
All right. Nice. I said Robin. What'd you say? Krillin. Fall Out Boy. Nice. You said Robin. Is it Dick Grayson? Dick Grayson. All right. <laughs> That's two boys right here that love Dick. Oh, yeah. Stop. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. All right, Allie. Oh, Allie Fall Out Boy. That's awesome. From The Simpsons. That's awesome. Jump, jump. Oh. He made my not, not uh, the band. He oh. made my runner-up list. Did he? Yeah, good call. So, Fall Out Boy, first appearance in the 1950s Radioactive Man series film, or serial, serial film? Serial, yeah. Yeah, shown at the comic book convention in the episode, Three Men in a Comic Book. Um, however, unlike many Simpsons characters, he's only made a handful of appearances in the show. Uh, while Radioactive Man is a broad parody of many superheroes, most obviously containing elements of Batman and Superman, um... Actually, the the comic incorporates an origin story similar to the Hulk. Um, That's true. Among others, Follow Boy is mainly a parody of Robin, with his costume references being the young ward of Radioactive <clears throat> Man and his younger age and sidekick status, with elements of Spider Man, and uh, his catchphrase is Jimmy Key Jillikers. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Key Jillikers. Yeah. Do you like um, the portrayal of him in the comic books or Milhouse's portrayal of him? <laughs> Milhouse didn't really actually get to play much of Not a, really. get no. to portray much. He was underneath the truck when it was doing the uh, x-rays. And yeah. Those aren't real x-rays, are they? <laughs> Which they actually were. But yeah, um, yeah they were. Not much. Not much. Not the much. Not the much. Uh, not much hey, is... your mother's not the mats is the worst <laughs> I've ever ate. Not much is actually really known about his actual powers or abilities, but um, what is it here? There's like a the radioactive machine or something. The machine's gonna fall on him, and radioactive man catches it, and being caught in the beam gets transferred some of radioactive man's powers. Yeah, and they say like I feel different somehow. Like, I forget what they say, but yeah. But he is... I forget that happens to him, too. Yeah, and the only real kind of powers you you know about Radioactive Man is that, you know, he does have some form of superhuman strength mm -hmm. or healing abilities, and not too, too much else is known from that. I do have his, uh, the graphic novel that I found, which is actually really, really thick. Have you read me, it? No, it's going to take me a while is to get through. Is it sick or thick? It is uh, the thick. Um, it's from, I'm pretty sure Bongo put it out. Nice. Mm -hmm. So Ooh. I'm really looking forward to nice. reading that. But yeah, I don't know. He's he's one of those sidekicks that's, it's exactly, he's a Robin ripoff. Mm. So so you kind of picked Robin. Kind of, but uh, But the difference the is Allie freak. doesn't love dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hello. But Melhouse being, um, having that role, he does mention it a few times. And Jiminy so, Jillikers. Yeah. Jiminy Jillikers. Jiminy Jillikers. Great, great. I'd actually love to see it if they actually did a uh, the Radioactive Man movie, especially with Melhouse. That'd be great. <laughs> the goggles, they do not sing. <laughs> Up and at them. Up and at them. Up and at them. Up and Up at them. At them. <laughs> Funny stuff. I've got the uh, that toy at home, and I didn't turn the the noise. Is button there a off. button? You, oh, but there is. A... Sometimes you can just walk by it, and it turns on. <laughs> Scared the shit out of Michelle so many times. <laughs> oh, I, 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 holy fuck! <laughs> <laughs> In the middle of the night, that'll that'll uh, definitely perk you up a little bit. Just a little. Just a little. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, my number one. Follow I boy. Be up and at the um. All right. Not the shitty band, but the Simpsons, the Simpsons hero. Character. The well, shitty band. Do you want me to do mine? Because both you're going to kind of both talk I about figured. how much you yeah. love Dick. So. Sure. Um, well, mine, uh, as I say, it's kind of a stretch because, you know, there's a whole team of warriors. Uh, I picked Krillin from Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z fame. Um, you know, and I guess this also, in a way, can be tied into comics because, you know, there was originally the Dragon Ball manga before the anime. Um, there you go. What do I got here? So Krillin has always been my favorite Dragon Ball Z character. He was always my main in Budokai Tenkaichi 3. And in the manga anime, always provides most of the tropes that a typical sidekick would have. He's the best friend of the main hero being Goku. He can be wimpy, nerdy, weak, scared at times, but when it really matters, he's always one of the braver members of the Z Fighters and is always at Goku's side, willing to help any way he can. Legitimately as well, the Destructo Disc is bad. Don't worry, Goku, I got this. Ah, oh, okay, you got um, this, Goku. <laughs> you know, he's ranked as like one of the strongest, if not the strongest human on planet Earth. Um, loyal, wise, strong, great warrior. He's always deemed much weaker than his Saiyan friends, of course, but he is not an alien. 
Um, I mean... Makes sense. For what you would describe a sidekick, though, yeah, as I say, sure. There, you could say Gohan's a sidekick. You could say Piccolo's a sidekick. You could say any of the people... You go back to the original, like, series, you could say really, like, Bulma was Goku's sidekick, mm-hmm. but... Um, Yamcha. Yeah, or Yamcha. But I think, you know, Krillin kind of has all Hadouken. those tropes. Hadouken! And, um, I mean, the other real big thing that Krillin is responsible for is when getting killed by Frieza is what put Goku over the edge to becoming a Super Saiyan. That is so, true. So, I mean... You don't mess with Goku's best friend. You don't mess with his best friend, right? I mean... Basically, everyone else Goku knew got killed on Namek, yet when Krillin gets killed, he goes fucking Super Saiyan and beats the shit out of Frieza in, like, three minutes, even though it took, like, 20 episodes for that yeah. to pass by. <laughs> but, um... Charged uh, episodes. <laughs> yeah, oh, Goku's healing. Goku's got to heal for one hour. Okay, Sounds like a the whole Walking season. Dead. Yeah. Oh no, Dragon Ball Z was the that, worst oh. for that shit, man. Do not get me <laughs> literally, started. Literally, I won't even get into it, but just for example, Goku has to go into this like chamber to heal because he suffered too many wounds or whatever from training and from getting fighting the, and Ginyu, fighting Force. the Ginyu Force. And they say that it's going to only take him an hour to heal. I, not exaggerating, there's probably like 20 episodes that it takes for that one hour to pass. Wow. I'm not even kidding. And they have all these stupid filler episodes like Bulma and Captain Ginyu switching places into like a frog and... Just, ugh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm glad they actually put out Dragon Ball Z Kai where they redid the whole series and took out all the filler episodes. So it's like instead of whatever, like 220 episodes, it's like 87 instead or some whatever, right? 98 well, it's or something. Like, let's take, a, oh, let's take a half hour episode <clears throat> and put it and make it 15 minutes. Yeah. And so you get two episodes... Like for the price of one, Bob. Yeah, for one. Yeah, I mean we're steering off topic a little bit, but yeah, Krillin, he's my boy. Anyone that's ever you used got to a lot of boys. You know, I've got lots of boys. Yeah, you got a whole like crew. To, I like to play with them. Um, anyone that ever used to play Budokai Tenkaichi three with me back in the day knows that like if we were on a team battle, like he was always my secret weapon. Like I'd bust Krillin out like number two. I'd be like losing. No one ever saw it coming. Well, eventually, because, like, Cody or Beard would just be like, oh, fuck, he's bringing out Krillin, like, now I'm gonna have to bring out, like, Super Saiyan 4 fucking Gogeta, or Gogeta. Either way, yeah, Krillin, you're fucking awesome, yeah. man. Keep on doing what you're doing. Even in this South Saga. Even though you're weird blinded. and you fucking android now. And he still, like, tried to fight and defend <coughs> himself, but... He grew his hair out. He had kids. Good job. He moved on. He did. Good choice. I like Thanks. all the different areas of media. And I feel like I'm dying right now. Why? I don't know. You gonna be okay? You gonna make it? <coughs> you got the black lung? I do. Today I'm a real coffee one. Alright, well, me and Beards, Beards and Eyes, our number one. Beards and Eyes, <laughs> Faces and Ears. I think everybody saw this coming. Head yeah, I shoulders, think they knew someone was gonna toes. have it. Yeah. That's actually why I didn't put... I, I love Robin, too, but I didn't put him on my list because I was like, I know both of these guys are going to fucking have Robin. See, I put in brackets first Robin in general for me because each Robin, like I said, has an individual character to sure. him. And like Tim Drake says, Batman <laughs> always needs a Robin. Yeah. That's pretty much how he became Robin. He started stalking Batman and like telling him that, like, hey... You're a little too dark right now. You need a Robin. It's like that little be Robin. dog be that Robin. follows the big bulldog around. It's like, <laughs> hey, 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 let me, let me be a Robin. Let me be a Robin. Uh, get out of here. Hey, shut up. We are talking about the OG. Yes. Dick Grayson. Created in 1940, Robin was DC Comics' first uh, teenage sidekick. Part of the Flying Graysons. Pretty much comics in general. He was yeah. the first teenage sidekick. The Flying sidekick. Graysons. Yeah. Sounds like a tag team. That well, was their, yeah, uh, that was was their, their acrobatic their show, part of the circus. Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I remember now, but it just it sounds like a WWE tag team. Yeah. Now we're yeah. the Flying Graysons. Well, it is the same kind of entertainment, like, not wrestling, but... They're but what, acrobats. So, yeah. in Very, the movies, yeah, it was Two-Face, but in comic lore, it was always Joker that did it? <laughs> no, it was a... Ri- no, it, that was like a lost panel that kind of showed the Joker. It was really just a, uh, a mob boss... So, first off, his he was created to draw a younger audience, and because Batman was always kind of like just having monologue throughout his comics, 
and they were like, okay, he kind of needs someone to talk to other than like Commissioner Gordon every once in a while. Yeah. 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 So that was another reason as well. And his instant popularity spawned a shit ton of imitations, such as Bucky, Toro, Sandy the Golden Boy, and Speedy. And he was also the youngest in a family of art acrobats. I was going to say archers because I just said Speedy. Um, yeah, the Flying Graysons. Um, but yeah, it was a mob boss who was trying to extort money from the circus, and the circus said no, so he sabotaged, put acid on the ropes, mm-hmm. and then of course Bruce Wayne adopted him, <coughs> he became Robin, and the rest is history. He is the one, he was the leader of the Teen Titans, and then became Nightwing, Yeah, which is one of my, my favorite One of my favorite, yeah. And that's another thing I like about Robins, is that they always progress into something more. Like, you got Nightwing, Red Hood, uh, Red Robin, and... Well, the Red Hood story is kind of like a brutal one. Oh, very brutal one, but still, he's a big part of the Bat family again, like yeah. now. And his comic is fucking awesome. But, uh, yeah. Oh, and random fact, the Joker has a special kind of hate for Dick Grayson, because he is one of the only people, and the only Robin in general, that he can't get under the skin of like he's killed uh Jason Todd and he's fucked around with uh Tim Drake and the Tim Drake solo series and stuff Mm -hmm. but yeah Dick Grayson doesn't let Joker get to him and that pisses Joker off because that's what he does Mm -hmm. he even gets under Batman's skin once in a while oh yeah gets under the cowl yeah just squeezes his bum a little bit but not really (laughs) Of course, he giggles at that. I love it. All right. I love the bum. That was now, you, you know how you always see that like meme of like Batman slapping yeah. Robin? Is yeah. that Dick Grayson that's getting it slapped? Must be, it must be. It must be because it's such an, old. Yeah, that's yeah. from like the 1940s or probably a little <clears throat> later, actually, because he looks more like a teenager there. Yeah. I would assume that's Dick Grayson, though. Good list, boys. Yeah. All around, I know it ended up being a little bit shorter than what we uh, usually have, but that just means great minds think alike. Well, we're at an hour, and we still have listener lists. Well, we have runner-ups and listener lists, so that might be Mm -hmm. another 20 minutes, so we might be good. Most of my runner-ups have been said, I think. Yeah, I think most of mine have been said, too, but I have a couple. I uh, I didn't know which one was actually the sidekick, but Blunt Man and Chronic. I would probably say... Chronic? I would say Which Blunt Man. his name second? Um, I'd say Blunt Man. Yeah. Sideshow Bob? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Sideshow Bob's kind of always the but sidekick. I, but I mean, Sideshow Bob, I mean... Sad. Silent Bob? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had Crypto, the super dog, Superman sidekick. Okay, good one. Uh, Yoshi slash Luigi. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob, agent <clears throat> of Hydra, Deadpool's sidekick. Yeah, sure. Tails. Bucky. Yeah, Tails. Tails. Would Knuckles be one? Um, eh, because they're kind of... Initially, they're more enemies, because Knuckles Again, thinks that rivals, Sonic is yeah. trying to fucking steal the emeralds and shit. Oh, right, 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 right. Mm. I got Peter Puppy and Snot of Earthworm Jim Snot, Fame. yeah. Nice. Um, I've got Choda Boy. Oh, yeah. Um, Choda Boy. From um, Orgasmo. Yep. I've got Alfred. Good, good, good. I have Fallout Boy. I already covered that. I've got Captain Haddock from Tintin. Ooh. Um, I'm trying to think of... I had a couple other ones on the top of my head, but... Groot? Comes and goes. Yeah, Groot. I am Groot. I have uh, Timber. He's uh, Snake Eyes sidekick. He's nice. a wolf. So more of a henchman? Well, he's a wolf, yeah. We can save that for any top five henchmen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's all the runner-ups I really had. I had we a had ton, but I didn't more. write most of them down. Well, I like down. Speedy. He was a runner-up. Yeah. <clears throat> but the original, like, Roy Harper. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think last minute here. We've already... We've just... Aqua, Aqualad. I had so many. Uh, Who's Blade's sidekick? The old guy. Oh, what's his uh, name? Uh... I forget. If someone wants to look it up while I start yeah. saying, nah, nah. Yeah. All right, shall we get to... Look it up yourself, people. Listener lists? Yeah, do it. Sure. All right, let's start with 
Ariel Dupe. I hope I say that right. She's the oracle of NerdChurchRadio.com, and you can find her on Twitter at Ariel the Oracle. And she says, number five, Etta Candy from Wonder Woman. She's the her chubby little sidekick. She's uh, basically like the peppermint patty. Oh, the patty. Number four, Dick as Robin. Mm-hmm. Three, Aqualad. Mm-hmm. Two, Speedy, Emmy. Uh, and one, Barbara as Oracle. Cool. I was Very kinda, good choices. Gonna guess that number one from your from her name there, but <laughs> yeah, good list. Uh, at nerds chatting said Adam Eve or Alan the Alien from Invincible. Good, good. Mm-hmm. Hysteria fifty one <clears throat> podcast says would be Dick Grayson, but he has graduated past sidekick. So Damian Wayne honorable mention goes to Skeets. Okay. Tick of the City, you can find him at I am the Tick with underscores in between each letter. Says, admittedly, Basement, I'm biased, but my sidekick, Arthur, is the sidekickiest. <laughs> I had a feeling. He's the sidekickiest. I had a feeling we were going to go there. Comic Confidential Podcast says, DC, Dick Grayson, Marvel, Bob Adrian of Hydra, and other <coughs> Fallout Boy, the Millhouse version. There you go. Nice. nice. Mixing it up a little bit. Too many Jellicers. Too many Jellicers. Mandy of the Little Geek Lost podcast yeah. mm-hmm. says Batman. I said he's not a sidekick, silly. She said he'd be mine. And I said that's a damn, that's a damn good answer. <laughs> Zombie Kitty at Z Kitty Podcast Purr. said... A coup, a coup from Crash Bandicoot. Nice. <laughs> Little Sister from <laughs> Bioshock. Nice. Silent Bob, Clank from Ratchet and Clank, and Robin from DC. I like a lot of the video game drops there. Mm-hmm. Nice, eh? Well very done. Very good, very good. Carl Hamlin, you can find him at Carl Hamlin on the Twitterverse. The Twitters. Five, Wally West. Four, Casey Jones. Yes, he is yeah. a sidekick. Yes, he is. Three, Damien. Two, Oracle. Number one, Dick Grayson. I like that top three. It's a good top three. You would. It's you str- just like dick. It's a strong top he three. Loves dick. Broken Con Dumbs, D-U-M-B-S, says uh. Tim Drake, Roy Harper, Chewbacca, Pinky from Pinky and the Brain. I That was gonna. That was Michelle. She's like, does Pinky and the Brain count? He I'm says, like, might not count, but it does to me. That's fine. There's yeah. no rules. No, it's that your counts. List. I'll count it. I would say it counts. What? They're not, he's not a superhero. Is he a sidekick or a, a henchman, though? <clears throat> He's a sidekick, but would we consider Brain a superhero? Not really. That's where I started That's drawing I mean. the line. Yeah, I'm just like, so I could do a lot of sidekicks, but they got to be superheroes. But there's that whole like theory that Pinky's actually the genius and the Brain is insane. I've read that too. Moth. <laughs> and number one, Arthur the Moth from The Tick. Yeah. Nice. nice. He's made quite a few lists. I love yeah. it. Uh, Toby Hagen, or Hagen, Hagen. at Toby Hagen, Hagen. Uh, says five, Gaff from Blade Runner, cool. four, The Luggage from Discworld, three, Muttley from Wacky Racers. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> Good, Muttley. But then again, once again, not a superhero, but I'll allow great, it just because... Great sidekick. Yeah, great sidekick, but not a superhero. We sidekick. might have to do our own just straight up sidekick top fives. Okay. Two, Sakura from Naruto. Nice. And one, Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm, cool. Very nice. Good list. Miles, Tails, Prower. Good listener list. Yeah, thank you well, for all guys, the input. I love I how many lists we got. Now, just quickly, uh, Enzo. Ooh. Yeah. And Dog. The realest guy in the room? <laughs> My name is <laughs> Enzo Amore, <laughs> and I am a certified G and, and a bona, bona fide, fide stud, and you can't teach that. And this this right here, this is Big Cass, and he's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. Bada boom, realest guys in the room. How you doing? Sorry, you got the whole thing right when you You mentioned Enzo. (laughs) (laughs) So we don't get an applause on that one, eh? Why don't you come and try this Louisiana gold? (laughs) (laughs) I'm the Skywalker smack talker. No, <laughs> Smack Talker Skywalker, get Skywalker. it right, sweets. Anyway, sorry, sorry. Thank you for all those uh, the inputs. We love having you guys give us as many lists as possible. Whether even just commenting, give yeah. us a yay yeah. or nay on our yeah. lists, and just, you can reach us on Facebook or give Twitter. us ideas the for Facebooks top five or the Twitters. Yeah, and you can email us at basementcondition at gmail dot com. A couple mail. of shout outs before we wrap this up. Do Be it. Real Network B R E E L dot com. 
uh, the Potter and Family community. What's up, everyone? Mm-hmm. Hashtag. Mm-hmm. Yes. Potter and Family. And the Get Fresh crew. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Oh, sorry, I jumped the gun. Yeah, you got Woo-hoo. excited. I did. Let's Actually, go get some Fago together, boys. You whoop whoop. And, of course, Movie Pod Squad. And MoviePoopShoot.com. And a very important <laughs> shout-out. Anyone who's listening, oh. this shout-out's for you. That's Thank you all. We love you guys. And if you enjoyed what you're hearing, please leave us a quick review. Uh, just quick. Tell your friends. On iTunes or Stitcher. Send or, yeah, it to tell somebody. You know. And if you leave us a quick review before this upcoming Monday, you enter a contest to possibly win a Black Panther pop vinyl from Captain America Civil War. And once again, some of my autographed nudes there from you my go. early <laughs> play, Playgirl editions that I did not get accepted for. We are going to make that optional, so we're not going to like surprise you. I have a feeling that most people would really enjoy them. And if you want to go somewhere else to listen to us for some reason, Beard, where can they find us? Oh, uh, you know, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play. That's some pretty damn good locations to find us. How would uh, they find us, Hallie? Just type in basement condition and you'll figure it out. Yeah, I, yep, would, yep, I yep. would be able to figure that out, so I'm pretty sure anyone uh-huh. could. Uh-huh. <sighs> yep, mm-hmm. Yep, 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 uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, so we're going to wrap this up in a nice little package, as we say, and we hope you have a good one. We're going to have a good one, and as always, stay stay mint! And don't forget to tune in to our next Top 5 episode, where we go over our Top 5 Ningas. Ninjas. You're not getting paid if you don't say it right. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Our top five ninjas. Yes, that sounds more correct. Right here. Same basement, same condition, same bloody podcast. Hiya! I'm not giving you all of the money. Oh, bloody Christ.